Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to game two between Ad Jad Saxton on OKC and John O. Brown's big boys, Ben Q. And uh, I want to give a shout out to Da Dazzle in the Twitch chat for pointing out how awfully I was butchering the poor John O. Brown's boys' name. I think I was saying John O. Bravo, which is fair enough because there's a character called Johnny Bravo. So, But uh, my fault, guys. Sorry about that. So we'll have to see if John O. Brown's big boys can uh, pull out a uh, or pull out a win so they can equalize the series, or uh, we'll have to see if Ad Jad Saxton can uh, take the series away. Already we can see Oriana and Ezreal being taken out of the pool by John O. Brown's learning from the last game. They cannot go up against that Ori. They had uh, Mantheon. He got first blood, admittedly, which was really well done, but uh, they couldn't convert that into an advantage for themselves. So Lee Sin going to be banned out by the uh, the John O. Uh, no, sorry, Ad Jackson. Ad Jad Saxon. I don't see. Sorry, guys, I just realized that uh, you're still looking at the title screen. <laughs> so there we go. So Oriana and Ezreal will be banned out by the blue team. And uh, so far, Lee Sin and Elise being banned out by the other team. So they're focusing on the junglers. So poor, uh, I believe it was Mountain Drew, who was the jungler in the previous game for John O'Browns. And uh, he's, he's copying a little bit of the, the focus of the bands of the, the other team. Also, we're waiting for the last band. It will be Shivana by uh, those guys, and that's definitely fair enough, even though she was nerfed, she's still very, very strong. Yasuo, the final band out, they do not want the uh, the enemy team picking up the champion that works so well for them, and the hang on, I probably should clarify what I meant by that sentence. The the winners of the previous game, who had a very strong Yasuo, which is Ad Saxton, they do not want that Yasuo being used against them. So, now we have uh, now we have Johnny, John O'Brown's they need to decide who they want first up. They've got to pick someone who can't get countered too easily because the the Ad Saxton guys certainly know what they're doing. And they're going to take the Zack for themselves. So taking that one away from Saxton is... Uh, oh, I just realized that uh, Ad, Ad Jad Saxton. And they have a guy called Saxton. Being really slow on picking up the, uh, the names here. But uh, whatever. So Zach will not be played again by these guys. The the ads the ad Jad guys they banned out Ziggs in the previous game. Looks like they're considering picking him up for themselves at the moment. I'll have to see if that's what they decide to go for. They uh, they're in a much more comfortable position than the other guys for uh, John O Browns. It's do or die for them at the moment. Whereas uh, there's a bit of a safety net there for. The Ad Saxton guys. Looks like they're considering Thresh as well. Was he banned down? Yes, he was banned down in the previous game, but uh, they're going to change to Susan. I'd love to see me some Susan action. It'd be his first uh, show up in quite a while. As uh, He did get nerfed, so he can't cast Wither as far. It's the, the range was nerfed, and the ult no longer increases the range, so they've got to be right next to him for, for him to Wither them, but he will get locked in here. We don't know whether that's going top or mid. Uh, not mid, sorry. Top or jungle at the moment. A mid Narciss would be cool, but uh, he'd be in some trouble. Kazix has been left open. He's uh, been banned, I think, almost all the games I've done this today. Kazix has copped a ban hammer. And instantly, Thresh and Kazix picked up for uh, the John O. Browns guys. So they, they've got a plan in mind. And, I mean, at the moment, they've got two really strong initiators and then someone who loves a good initiation to, uh, you know, jump in and start wreaking havoc. The uh, the AD carry and potentially top laner still available for them to pick. And it looks like Caitlyn may be what they decide to go for. Revive has a very cool picture now. But I doubt that a revive teleport Caitlyn's going to be coming out here. They're considering Poppy as well. Not sure if that's uh, what they actually want to go for. So we'll we'll talk about other stuff as uh, it's not not locked in until it's locked in, I guess. So Susan, if I had to guess, I'd say he would be going top. Uh, as in the jungle, he's just a little weaker at top. If he has an easy lane, he'll be get get very very scary. Caitlyn going to be the lock-in here. Probably be played by True Shot. He had a very good game on Ezreal. Have to see if he can replicate that on the British Caitlyn, who now swings her hips more as they updated her model. She kind of walked like a, a peg leg before. 
or a, a stick. I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, Alistair also going to be locked in once again. Very smart against the uh, the Kazakhs and even the Zack able to get them out of the team where they won't be quite as much of a bother. And now both Garand and Olaf being considered. You'd imagine an AD carry would uh, be taken. They could go with something else, but they need I mean, Caitlyn has a lot of range. They can't go with a melee. They need something that's ranged, and then AD carries just scales so well with the synergy between attack damage, attack speed, crit, life steal, all of that. Jinx going to be the lock-in at the end, and, uh, of course, Caitlyn going to try and catch the Jinx. Jinx going to try and cause some mayhem. Uh, with the switcheroo, Jinx can match her range for range, uh, and then, of course, there's a very strong on-demand steroid, whereas Caitlyn doesn't have much in the... Uh, in, in the form of steroids, apart from getting headshots, which is not the most. And Olaf will be locked in as well. So, who is top and who is jungle? Out of Zach and Olaf. Uh, stay tuned to find out as uh, we see who's going to be the last pickup for Ad Saxton here. Instantly going with the Vi. So, Caitlyn and Vi going to be grouping up here to uh, try and take down Jinx. And of course, there is a great synergy between Vi and Jinx as. Uh, if Vi locks onto someone, say the... Sorry, I meant Vi and Caitlyn, there's great synergy. If Vi targets Jinx and starts uh, barreling towards her, knocking everyone out of the way, and Caitlyn channels the ult at the same time, Jinx is clearing the way for the ult to go sailing through and smacking Jinx straight in the face. So uh, we'll have to see how that ends up going for them. It's uh, Jinx doesn't often go in the lane, so you can probably guess who's going where now. But uh, for the next 20 seconds, the players could be watching, so we'll just keep the blackout on just in case. And uh, we'll have to see how they go with this. In the mid, it will be Ziggs versus, we can imagine, Kazakhs. And uh, that's going to be... it's going to be interesting. Kazakhs going to be bullied very, very hard early on. But, uh, I mean, if he can get on top of Ziggs, we've seen what happens when uh, this player jumps on top of Alf Stewart. Terrible things can happen. And uh, the Dazzle also told me how to pronounce that, so I'll try and figure that out. Uh, Doesn't make any sense to me, but uh, that's apparently what the Kazakhs will be in this game. So we can now reveal the Summoners. And uh, not too much of note, we've got the Ghost Teleport on Al, who played Yasuo very well in the previous game. So he's going to be doing more of the same, it seems. Uh, Horse, once again, picking up the Alistair, he did very well on that. With uh, There's no Yasuo to combo with it, unfortunately, but, I mean, there's uh, he's, he's going to be able to s stick around and protect the Ziggs and Kate, because both of them have long range, and if... Zack and Olaf manage to get on them, or even Kazakhs. Alice is just free to sit back and protect them, as Vi and Narsus are all the initiation and pressure that you need. Um, of course, Olaf can go, you know, immune to Alistair, or yeah, pretty much immune to Alistair, uh, and he will be a lane Olaf, which we don't often see these days. You, you more often to see a jungle Olaf abusing his ridiculous clear speed, but he will be going against Susan, and I mean, Olaf, if he levels his uh, true damage nuke, the... Oh, I'm trying to remember what it's called. The, the E uh, makes lightning come down. It's uh, going to be very difficult for Narsus to farm, but of course, the lifesteal means that he'll be able to sustain through uh, the worst of it. Uh, and then we've talked about the junglers, Vi and Zack, they perform similar roles, but Zack's more AoE orientated, Vi kind of singles on top of someone and then AoEs everyone down, getting the, uh, the Vault Breaker knockback as well. Uh, so some newer junglers coming in. We'll have a look at what the Narcissus is running as opposed to the Olaf, that'll be pretty interesting. We've got 6% uh, lifesteal bonus, some CDR, armor, magic resist. And the Masteries will be 921. So this Narsus, between the uh, the 21 in defense and the Lifesteal Quince, as well as his solely to passive, he's going to be very, very difficult to move out of lane. Now, Sindri did quite well on the Mordekaiser in the previous game. Uh, not not the... Not, not like it didn't win or anything, so... Yeah, 18 damage and 13 armor. Jeez, he, he's going to be going for it. If they get into a, a 1v1... He's uh, got an interesting rune name as a uh, rune name, rune set name as well. And then the mastery is he's gone 21 9. So this will be a damage orientated Olaf. He wants to do as much as he can. So it'll be down to him to stop this Narcissus farming. 
and uh, hopefully Mulchinator on Zach will give him a hand with that. So Mountain Drew has gone from Udia to Jinx, so they've switched it around a little bit. Remzi is still the support, Sindri's still the... No, sorry. Um, yeah, Sindri's still the top laner. And now we can go ahead and jump into the skin battle as soon as the game loads up here. This will be the second game in this best of three semi-final to determine who goes to forward to uh, the grand final. It is between John O. Brown's big boys, Ben Q, and Ad Jad Saxton on OKC. I'm just going to quickly look up what OKC is, guys. I really want to know. <laughs> um, the skin battle has come up. We'll just quickly find out what OKC is. Oklahoma City Thunder. That's probably not it. Uh, oh, maybe it is. OK Cupid, apparently. So, free dating site. You can go and add... <laughs> no, please don't. I'm just kidding. But uh, if, if you want a, uh, a pretty darn good jungler on OK Cupid, you can go ahead and add him, Jad Saxton. And uh, we'll have to see if they can take this series with another win and uh, advance to the grand finals to take on whoever wins in the the other semis that's going on right now. It is between uh, Knife and Fork Patrol versus Fibonacci 5. Uh, Fibonacci 5 had a brilliant showing last September. They had an incredibly close series with strength in numbers to lose in the semis. So now they've got a second chance at the semis, and their old friend strength in numbers are out of the tournament. So hopefully they can uh, redeem their friends against the very tough Knife and Fork Patrol. Uh, now into the skin battle, we've got Special Weapon Zack versus a whole slew of skins coming out of the bottom team here. So uh, Ad Jad will be walking away with the skin battle. I think that makes it one for one as far as skin battles go, but we are now into the game. We'll quickly switch these around. Hopefully we get it right this time. <laughs> uh, that goes up there. Uh, there. There we go. So, representing the John Brown Be Big Boys Ben Q team, in, uh, hopefully in a redemption for them, it will be Urgefus Fosfuyas on the Kazakhs. I've already forgotten how to say his name. Remzi will be at the support once again on the Thresh. He'll be joined by previously Udi and now Jinx Mountain Drew. Mulchinator is on the Zack. Sindri will be rounding them out on the Olaf at the top. And representing Ad Jad Saxton on OK Cupid. We have Horse, um, the Alistair once again. True Shot will be joining him as the Arctic Warfare Caitlin. We have the Pharaoh Narsis up at the top, or Susan, as he's affectionately called. Alf Stewart once again in the mid as a quite farm long, uh, farm orientated long range AP, as he's having a little bit of a laugh to himself. And Saxton will be rounding them out as the Vi, who is having a little bit of trouble in the lobby, but it looks like everything is fine now. So we have a very defensive spread out from uh, the Ad Jad crew. Blue team being a little more... They're, they're, they're spread out quite nicely as well. Kazakh's just sitting in the mid here. He has a red pot. We haven't seen that in quite a long time. He means to go all in on this Ziggs. So Alf Stewart's going to have to abuse his range. Not give up first blood again like he did in the previous game. Susan is going to have a little bit of trouble against this damage orientated Olaf. As uh, Reckless Swing, of course, that is what it's called. It'll do 102 damage. That is unmitigatable. So, Al, I mean, he's fairly tanky, but he can't take too many of those simultaneously. We can see that Saxton taking away the blue here has started with the, uh, the, or what is it called? The, the, the excessive force, I think he's called. Yes, it is. As, uh, as the red team, Ad Jad, going to be headed down to the bottom here with their opponents already. Thresh able to pick up a soul. We'll have to see if uh, the Ad Jad guys can zone Thresh away from those souls to try and make him as squishy as possible. Sindri going to be uh, doing the damage, but of course, every time he Reckless Swings, he does damage to himself, and he do he's not very tanky. And uh, Reckless Swing, now that it scales, it's uh, the total damage dealt will is is 30% uh, of the total damage dealt. It's what's done to you. So, I mean, it, it can be a double-edged sword, the Reckless Swings. Uh, Al, he's uh, not had to use the pot just yet. Farming away on the Q already has two stacks in it. As Mulchinator going to be taking away the third buff for himself. Alf Stewart going to take a lot of damage from the Kazakhs. Actually, flashes and ignites. Alf Stewart forced to flash away from that one. So, flashback from the previous game. As Saxton is clearing his way over to the red buff. 
is uh, taking the, the farm option rather than rushing the buffs as Molchinator has gone more for rushing the buffs and then clearing out as it looks like he will be headed top. Olaf has blown, that's Sindri, has blown his health bot for the time being. Al still sitting on his as uh, Alf Stewart, I think the blue team has communicated here that there is no flash on the zigs zack going to be coming out here lands right on top of him and the kazix is nowhere to be seen so Molchinator not going to be able to pick that one up but uh, i mean the minions really didn't let kazix go forward there so zig's going to be forced back that will put the lane into uh, a <laughs> i really hate butchering this guy's name but uh, i don't really know how to say it the kazix free farming is very bad news though and uh, actually at the top they're annihilating the Narcissus in the CS as well. I mean, there's a bunch here that uh, he can claim. But Al struggling just a little bit at the moment. As Saxton looks like he wants to get him a bit of an advantage. Sindri going to get a reckless swing off. Now gets with it as Al going to be coming in. Uh, the ghost goes off from Sindri. Can he possibly get out? Excessive force is used. Oh, that, uh, what is that W called? The dented blows. That was the thing that picked up the kill there so Sindri barely goes down he went very very squishy he was winning the lane until that happened it's uh, very well done by Saxton there to uh, well he's is he, he lost his Zack jungle so he went Vi and is doing very well on him so in the mid lane we can see the CS still in Kazix's favor looks like he was going for an early brutalizer or at least just trying to get as much damage as he can the red pot is still on him so this is the time when he'd want to make the plays Al Stewart still does not have flash has satchel charge for a little bit of disengage but yes so add Jad on OK Cupid pushing down at the bot as Mountain Drew is going to be uh, zooming off back to the base has 800 gold so yeah vamp scepter would make a lot of sense caitlin sitting on a thousand herself she's winning very handily in the cs once again and they're pushing very hard here zach nowhere to be seen to try and turn this around but i mean between alistair and caitlin you're not going to be locking that down very easily at all gonna have a pause here uh there is a bunch of lag and uh, i think a lot of people are starting to realize that they can download stuff so the uh oh no it looks like uh, we're giving it 30 seconds. So we're waiting for the lag to go away here. Alf Stewart doing a good job at keeping up in CS almost uh, while being under pressure. But as soon as level 6 rolls around for Urge uh, for the first foyer, foyers, he's, uh, well, he can either pick up the wings and become more mobile or he can just pick up, I would guess, the, the void, uh, no, not the void spike, sorry, the claw. He is leveling the taste there for you, so... He can really go for either one. If you're leveling Void Spikes, you kind of have to evolve that one first. But it depends whether he wants to be mobile or just murdering people. And Ziggs, looking pretty squishy at the moment. Again, Alf Stewart going for an Amp Tome rather than a Cloth Armor against an AD Assassin. Just realized that uh, this mid laner for the John Brown guys very much likes his AD Assassins. And I can't argue with him. They are pretty damn awesome. It looks like there is still ping going on. That's your team pausing. Uh, legit hurt in my head. Might says Al on the Narcissus. So it looks like Olaf never... Oh, he's quite low again, but Narcissus went back. He must have been low as well. He has picked himself up a Kindle Gem uh, CDR. Very handy in uh, farming up the Siphoning Strike, of course. As uh, Sindri trying to get as much as he can. He's got a long sword and the boots of speed. He's probably going for a Blade of the Ruin King. Which would make a lot of sense against the Narcissus. But he's just going to die so quickly. The the threat of Olaf is that he can go immune to CC and just like sprint through your team. But with this build, he's not going to be able to do that very well. The, uh, the gank... Very well uh, avoided by Alf Stewart there. Doesn't have too much mana for the Bouncing Bomb because, of course, they did change it. Oh, almost has the passive blown there. Dragon going to be taken away by Ad Jad as uh, Vi going to be banging her fist on the ground. No, she's going to uh, uh, call that back there. Kazix doesn't quite have the range to jump on Alf Stewart now. He's in a little bit of danger because he's got no mana. Alf Stewart certainly has the auto attack range. Um... To, to deal with him now 400 gold on the Kazix, not quite enough for a brutalizer or he could go for maybe like a door and shield or something would be pretty smart against uh, Ziggs and Vi but uh, 
He's going to be headed back for now. Alf Stewart has the Mega Inferno Bomb, so he's got to be careful. He's tried to back off into a corner that you wouldn't expect him to recall in, but uh, at this point there isn't enough mana for Alf Stewart. He's just trying to clear the wave as quickly as he can so he can get back. Sindri healing up quite nicely. He's picked himself up a Doran Shield. Definitely makes sense against the Narciss. As, uh, and now he's got a... Well, now the ultimate's available for Narciss. It's very, very difficult for Olaf. As uh, the Fury of the Sands, of course, does percentage damage, gives Narciss more and more health, and Olaf has no real way of dealing with that. Of course, Olaf gets faster and faster at attacking the lower health that he gets, but with Wither, it's kind of counteracted. Down at the bottom lane, we can see the CS still in True Shot's favor, but there's a fair few minions here that haven't died. The Mountain Drill, although here come in a stream for Caitlyn to take as well. Horse, once again, doing a good job at forcing the lane to be passive. Thresh would love to be able to try and kill Caitlyn, but uh, with an Alistair there, it's, it's, it's quite difficult. Alf Stewart has picked himself up a Chalice and going for the... Uh, rushing for the uh, Grail. He's uh, not, not going for armor, which may bite him in the behind. Gets a blue buff donated to him, and uh, Kazakh's waiting to pick up his level 6. He's very, very close to it, as he's been level 5 for quite a while. He's just trying not to push the lane. Ziggs, uh, did he throw out the Mega Inferno Bomb? He did indeed, and uh, well, there was a nice disengage from the blue team there, using the Lantern and the Chompers to uh, increase the distance. Mulchinator may pick up the Let's Bounce from that. Level 6 has come around. He does level the Taste there Fierce, so he's still going to be kind of immobile, but when he jumps on Alf Stewart like that, going to do a lot of damage. I don't think he even used Taste... Oh, yeah, he did use Taste there Fear. But, uh, yeah, Alf Stewart, it, he's just going to be able to keep his distance and spam at this point. As I was just saying, Saxon's going to come in. Oh, the, uh, the Assault and Battery goes off. Kazix tries to flash away. Actually, he... Oh, barely dies to the minefield there. Beautiful flash by him, though, to force Vi to go that far deep. And he timed the uh, the invisibility really well, actually. He avoided the assault and battery until it was uh, much too late. Vi going to take several tower shots to the face. And, I mean, Kazakh's almost got out there. The minefield was almost dodged. So Alf Stewart going to be pretty happy with that one. Saxton maybe not so much, but uh, they do pick up a kill and assist for just a kill. And uh, now the mid lane going to be pushed quite hard. Mulchinator has come in. Does have Cell Division. Gets ignited. Alf Stewart, will he be able to finish this off here? The minion's going to give him a huge hand, taking a, taking a massive amount of damage. I don't think he can kill Zack in time. Flashes away to avoid that. Alf Stewart, can he get the last bouncing bomb? No. Nicely dodged by Mulchinator there. Sindri forced back. This is terrible for him. He needed to get ahead early on, but because of Saxon, he couldn't. And now he's going to struggle. If he gets Blade of the Ruin King fairly early, it might be okay. As all oh, down to the bottom lane, we're going to have a lot of action going out. Let's see exactly what happens. So Horse going to get a lot of uh, distance for the Kate. As Remzi going to fall lower and lower. Going to be locked up in the box, I assume, here. As Remzi is going to get taken down. True Shot flashes forward to pick that one up. Is taking a lot of damage from the box, though. Horse trying to disengage, but it is not enough. Mountain Drew flashes forward. And now Horse has Unbreakable Will active. So Mountain Drew not going to be able to take him down. But and a, su a support going down for the AD carry. Mountain Drew is going to be able to freely push this one out. Get some damage on the tower. But mostly, all of these minions not going into Caitlyn's pocket. That's huge. Absolutely huge. As we can see on the gold, uh, Jinx behind by about 200, but that'll, uh, it, it's, it's still not good. Alf Stewart taking a lot of damage from Taste Their Fear. Going to manage to get out with the Satchel Charge, but this Kazix man, he's getting very scary. He's got the Brutalizer, the uh, Zigzalt gun to kill out the melee minions there, and he's going to be able to pick up the ranged ones as Ziggs murders the heck out of Minion Saxton. Just around in case he's needed, has the uh, Spirit of the Elder Lizard for a bit of the uh, the damage and of course gets uh, gets some of the health back so he's got kind of kind of spell vamp as Kazix going to pick himself up a blue so he'll be able to spam himself I would like to see this Kazix roam around a bit he needs to be felt in the other lanes he needs to help shut down the Narciss who just teleported to the top but this uh, Glacial Shroud pick up not only does it give CDR it gives a bunch of mana for farming up the Q gives a bunch of armor, which will be very effective against the Kazakhs and the Olaf. Now, it looks like a coordinated three-man gank's coming up here. Al's going to realize that he may be in a bit of trouble. Void Spike will end up landing, and he's not isolated, but Al's going to try and turn it around. Gets Fury of the Sands off, but they're not the healthiest. So, I mean, it might, they might get in trouble here. Ignite goes down, but there's not a lot that... Uh, no, have I got that wrong? 
No. John Brown and the boys, there's not a lot they can really do there. They're, uh, they're down by about 2,500 gold, but that's not too much in the 11 minute mark. It's certainly come back from a ball. Although they're going to lose their mid tower for their roam, which is no good at all. But Saxon's quite squishy, so if they decide to go for it. Oh, the Kazakh's going to be coming in. Takes a massive amount of damage. Vi does a lot, and Assault and Battery will hold him in place long enough for Alpha Steward to pick that up. Suddenly, Zach not able to do much without the very damaging Kazakhs. Oh, Mega Inferno Bomb does a lot, but the Bouncy Bomb once again dodged by the Zack. Meanwhile, at the bottom lane, the Engage goes off on the Kaelin, locked up very well by Remzi on the Thresh. And the Box is going to pull that one back. The uh, Ace in the Hole comes forward and is uh, held, oh, absorbed by Remzi, who does have a couple of uh, biscuits going, so he will get his health back quite quickly. The dragon is a couple of seconds from respawning and Saxon is there perfectly on time just waiting for it to come back up. Looks like he's heading bot first though to try and deal with the Jinx. Horse is uh, always going to be hooked forward as uh, the... Oh, can the... Uh, oh, actually nice lantern there. Saxon gonna get exhausted. This could get turned around by the blue team. 2v3. That was very nicely done. They barely didn't get the kill on Alistair with the super mega death rocket. But... Uh, they do force the Vi and the Alistair out for the time being. Caitlyn quite safe with her range, of course, and the net. Unless she gets pulled, she's going to get into a... Uh, unless she's pulled, she's not going to be in trouble at all. So Dragon has now respawned. We can see Urge of Rotovita heading down to the bottom lane at this point. But not too much point with that. Uh, he's going to chuck a Season 3 ward into the, into the Dragon Pit. And see the dragon is indeed up, so they may go for it at the moment. Multionator working on the white, as Alf Stewart could get a uh, Kazakhs in his behind. Going to get jumped on. That was an isolated taste there, fear for sure. And he, oh, can the Kazakhs get up? He uses the ultimate, which is called Void Assault, to close the gap. It does give a bit of movement speed, but Alf Stewart had his flash up, used it to disengage, and will be sitting pretty at the moment. So, looks like the pink ward is going to be taken down. Horse gets a sneaky ward over the wall, and uh, the dragon attempt going to be pushed back for now uh, that Adjed wanted to go for. Minions are getting absolutely wrecked by Ziggs, of course, so not much of a push happening at the, uh, at the mid by Blue. Vi going to be taking away the race. How is top lane going? It's uh, looking worse and worse for the Olaf as time goes on. Narsus is a ticking time bomb at the moment. 216 at the three minute, 30, 13 minute mark. That is very, very bad news for John Brown and co. So the disengage goes out by Kazakhs. How much gold is he sitting on? Oh, sorry. We'll uh, see what's happening to Sindri here. He has his ghost running. Al does... Oh, he popped his as well, but... The Spirit Fire is not enough. It's at level 1 as opposed to level 3 and with it. So, Sindri gets out for free, but this will be a lot of pushing for Narsus. Ignite was not available in that fight. It wouldn't have made a difference anyway. And, uh, yeah, this is just getting scarier and scarier for John Brown and the boys. They do have a hyper carry themselves, but she's going to get with it for sure. Looks like down in the bottom lane, the gank was not successful by Mulchinator. Did he manage to blow any cooldowns? He did blow Caitlyn's flash. And now Alistair has his own flash up as a dragon being worked on by the red team here. The first structure, oh no, the second structure falls and it is once again a D who take it. It is the top one. And dragon, oh, barely taken by Saxton there. Kazakhs, maybe not the best idea to go in there. He's going to try and disengage. His team is there for the save. Saxton, does he have a salt and battery? He does, and he's looking to jump on top of someone. Will he flash forward? He is going to flash, and he gets it onto Jinx. Oh, that was a terrible flash. Mulchinator forced to flash himself to get out. Mountain Drew was screwed the second that assault and battery went on. Pretty outrageous range, though. We'll have another look at that as uh, the Vi going to flash up here like we thought. And Jinx, I wouldn't have thought that was in range, but uh, apparently it was. That was a terrible flash. I, I have to say it again, like... Poor Mulchinator had to blow his flash there when he really shouldn't have. But uh, nonetheless, that is a kill for the red team after narrowly picking up a dragon for themselves. And they will be going for the tower now. So it looks like they may take away the series in a 2-0 sweep. Unless uh, John Brown and the boys pull out something soon. They've done quite well in the match thus far. But Narsus is getting to be a big problem. It's not really uh, not really Sindri's fault, honestly. He, he had the advantage firmly in his hand. But then Saxton just paid him a visit. And uh, that was the beginning of the end for his lane dominance. Kazakhs taking a lot of damage. But Mega Inferno Bomb not quite ready just yet.
Uh, no, yes, no, I was right there. <laughs> Wasn't expecting to be right. So, Giant's Belt is now there. The Longsword that I thought may turn into a Blade of the Rune King. Not, uh, not going that direction because he's not farming as well as you would hope on an Olaf. Al just freezing the lane up here, going for the Phage. So, uh, not picking up any completed items, preferring to just pick up bits and pieces that he needs. Blue buff being stolen away by Alf Stewart, going to uh, get the recall going on there. Puts a uh, hat on the snowman as he recalls and then uh, decides to cancel it once again. Whenever we zoom in to try and see a recall, they decide to cancel it. Alternator going to walk right past him and not really care as uh, Al probably much more important to get at this point. Kazik's going to be coming in with it, goes off on Olaf, but Undertow does land. Will this, uh, the Elastic Slingshot does land, and now a decent bit of damage going down. Al in the 1v3 is going to be getting a lot of damage from these guys, but just that isolated taste there, fear damage is much too much, and that's exactly who they wanted picking up the kill as well. Kazix is going to be sitting on 400 gold after that one. The red team are going to go straight for the mid-tier 3, a decent choice, and the bot still just passively farming away. So uh, the rest of the uh, rest of the teams are uh, trying to make the plays happen elsewhere. Top Narcissus did go down, but he does have teleport, and the mid-tier 3 will fall for it. That is not a good trade as it will end up falling. Saxton, can he get out? Nice satchel charge by Alf Stewart to help his teammate get out. Kazix is going to pop the... Uh Oh, what is his passive called? Unseen Threat. Actually going to be turned around by via Flash away by Kazix. And now Saxton is in a little bit too deep. Al has teleported in from behind. Beautiful Elastic Slingshot from Zach. He will get popped into the Bloblets as Saxton going to live there. Undertow misses from Saxton. Now Kazix, can he possibly get out? Alf Stewart has, uh, takes down Mulchinator with, uh, who was in Blob form. Never got to reform. And uh, now I think Kazix will get out for the time being, but the inhibitor is being worked on. Vi successfully got back to the base, picked up a Warden's Mail, part of the Randuins. And uh, this, this may indeed be the beginning of the end. That was very nicely turned around by Saxon, knew exactly when to engage the fight. And I mean, Kazix's damage is high, but he's, he's missing out on that second evolution point. He really, really needs another point in the leap because he may kill Alf Stewart right here. Looks like Alf Stewart knows he's in trouble. This, he could get a reset on the leap, but he doesn't have it at the moment. Actually, at the bottom lane, blue team going to pick up a kill as well. So let's find out exactly what happens down here. True shot getting jumped on the lantern is... Uh, will it be used here? No, Mountain Drew wants to stay back. As uh, the zap will land, Super Mega Death Rocket goes out and Horse going to pick up a kill on the Alistair. Don't think he can get the Kalen. And Al and Sindri going in a 1v1 Black Ops. But at this point, Susan is much too hard to take on. They will disengage in the end after a, uh, oh, well, a very nice kill by the blue team down at bot. They need to turn this into a tower. They probably should be able to get it here, but they have to. If they do not get a tower out of this, their, their team is just looking much too bad to come back. Looks like they will be picking up the global gold, which is nice for them. Dragon not close to respawning, so uh, will not be available for them to go. Though again, though the, then go and pick up. Vampiric Scepter is finished on Sindri. I would say Blade of the Rune King would be on the market of him. Saxton, after getting the Elder Lizard, going to go for a little bit of the tankiness now, trying to slow down the Vi, and of course being a hyper carry, that's exactly what you want to do. So she's gone for more of the burst, Bloodthirster build, and Caitlyn, if she gets a crit with Infinity Edge and Headshot on the same shot, that's going to chunk the heck out of whoever is unfortunate enough to be targeted by that. So Phage now completed on Al. Every time he hits someone in the face with Siphoning Strike, he'll get a bit of movement speed. But running low on the miner. How much gold is he sitting on? 900. There is 1100 on this vice. So she'll be able to get the Randuins, which she does indeed do. And now probably wants to get... Uh, or maybe uh, Magic Resist, not really necessary. She could go for maybe a Triforce, maybe a Bork, or maybe just Sunfire Cape or something. Her team is very, very tanky, so she could get away with another damage item if she so desired. As Al going to be pushing away up at the top. He's going to go for the the double stacks on the Siege Minion there. And of course, 46 gold, not too bad either. Horse going to be clearing out the Tri Brush as uh, the rest of the red team going to be closing in here on to uh, JB. The, the blue team, they now know Kazix is there, and actually it is a 4v3. Nice catch onto Saxton there, but now Alf Stewart has revealed himself, and Jinx going to be jumped on, and instantly melted there as Remsen. Remzi going to be knocked back by the Satchel Charge. Alf Stewart going to pick that one up. Kazix trying to get out. Alistair being slowed by the Void Spikes. Maybe enough for Kazix, but once again, only has one evolution point invested so far, as Al getting a 1v1 emulsionator, getting chunked to heck. 
by that siphoning strike. The bottom tier one is and going to end up falling. That means it is five structures taken down by Adjad to only the one of uh, the blue team, John Brown. And uh, the mid is, of course, spam pushing with the super minions. Going to be working on the tier two of bot. There's only one structure remaining outside of John Brown's base. So things looking very dire for them at the moment. They're going to have to try and get this Kha'Zix to level 11. That's very important. They need the last Whisper on him. Mountain Drew's uh, doing quite well. They need to try and have a team fight with him. Red buff going to be taken away there, I believe. Yes, it was. As uh, Red Team continuing on their objective slaughter to try and take down the Dragon. Mountain Drew, can he steal this one with a Zap? No, it has smited away. That Zap totally would have got it, though, if... Uh, had not been taken. Mulchinator just trying to pick up as much XP and gold as he can. His CS is very, very low as he was trying to help his team to not much avail. He's probably going to be going for the Spirit Visage, I would imagine, for, uh, I mean, a bit of CDR, a bit of more healing, and there's a decent bit of magic damage. Even Narsus can throw out some decent magic damage, but then, of course, you got Caitlyn and Vi who dish out the physical, so he might just decide to go Randuins and stack the health instead. As the inhib is back up in a minute, the super minions will stop spawning now, which is a pretty cool change they made. A minute before the inhib respawns, the super minions stop spawning, so that when the inhib comes up, there shouldn't be super minions, like, right next to it. Which is uh, a pretty cool change that they did, I think. Alf Stewart going to be pushing in the mid here, has his death cap, as well as an Anthene's on Holy Grail. Kazix has his wings, and is going to be going on to Alf Stewart. Takes away half his health, going to go in Viz. But Saxton may now get caught in the middle of the blue team here. Alf Stewart has been caught up by the Thresh. Flashes over the wall. Ramsey going to be following him there. I think Alf Stewart may be in trouble. Flash forward by Zack. Dan manages to get the kill, and Dangerous Game will give him some health. Molchanator picks it up with the Unstable Matter. Meanwhile, True Shot going to take down Kazix, and... And may take down Sindri as well. Going to take an ace on the hole to the back. Olaf only has 500 HP remaining. Horse going to get the pulverized for sure. Yes, he is. And going to headbutt it back towards Kaelin. Pilt over piece. Make a misses, but it does not matter. Vi is also going to take down poor Jinx. And that entire time, Al was just farming up at the top. Does he have enough to complete his Triforce? No, not quite. Needs another couple hundred. But it looks like Adjed on OK Cupid. They've got their foot on the throat. But uh, they can't quite end it just yet. As uh, John Brown do have very low respawn timers. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Got knocked into the lantern there. Unfortunately, Molchanator is his last sling, so it does not land on Kaelin. And is forced to back out there as Al going to be teleporting in from behind becomes a massive Pharaoh Susan. And Remzi has no escape from that one. Mountain Drew really needs to not get with it here, which is exactly what happens. Kazix gets locked out, and there is no escape from that one. Sindri can't even get onto the Caitlyn, is getting wrecked at the moment. As is going for the Frozen Heart, has all the components of it, but it is an expensive recipe. The Mega Inferno Bomb coming in. Horse does brilliantly there, holding Sindri in place. And this may be all she wrote for the semi-finals here at Respawn Land 29. Which is uh, hack the planet, although John Brown, they're not out of it just yet. They're going to try and defend. They now have Mountain Drew back up, and the Kazakhs back in. True shot again. Will he get taken down? No barrier. Is uh, I, don't, I think he would have lived without it anyway, but Mulchinator going to get the heck out of there, and it looks like the blue team do not have enough to hold on onto this, and in convincing style, add Jed on AK. OK Cupid are going to walk away with the 2-0 sweep to secure their place in the grand finals for the $250 cash prize. So beautifully played by both teams here. We'll have to nominate an MVP. I definitely think it was Saxton in this game. He had presence all over the map, helped his Susan get back into the game, and then just ran around murdering things. As uh, It was very well played in both games by uh, the John Brown boys. They just couldn't... They, they, they couldn't contend... At, uh, against the Platts in this one, I guess. But to get this far, they must have won a game. So obviously they know how to win. And we hope to see them in April when uh, Respawn will be happening once again. Thank you, ladies and gents. I'm going to see if I can catch the end of the other semi-final to see who goes up against Adjed and his friends, or Saxton and his friends, rather. This is Cold Blood signing out for now.